for engaging discussions to learn and exchange ideas, Correct. establishing truth, yes. and who is there to tell lies and, 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 and lie about other people's beliefs and theology. You have a fruitful oh, conversation. Oh, yes. No. Okay. Imagine, imagine, imagine. I tell you. Yeah, I want to show them something when they push in. <laughs> Mansur, mm. the challenge is still open, so whenever whenever you're ready, yeah. we are uh, not interested. Not interested. Not interested because we'll just happen last week. Sorry. In the event. Yeah. That's why you Look what happens here. Look what they do. I don't know how people are filming. It's so Look. not interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why? Why? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look what this guy does. Who's that? Oh, wow. This is one of them. This is the, one this of their teams. Just push us in the He's here, he's here today. Yeah, one of their, one of their. Listen. Right. He just starts screaming. Quran, Muhammad. That's fine, that's fine. So what I'm saying is, yeah. you said, why don't we speak to them? Yeah, I'm imagine, imagine I call you an idiot. Yeah. You're an idiot. So you right. an idiot. Well, I, I'd want to talk about it. No, no, I, no. no. Yeah, yeah. If I call you an idiot, an and then, to debate knowledgeable um, Christians, excuse uh, me, excuse me, I'm excuse speaking to him. Excuse me, bro, excuse me. I, 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 I will excuse you the moment you start okay. talking the truth so about Christianity. If I call you an idiot, yeah. Yeah. The lies and then I keep begging you to speak to me, and you said I'll speak to you. Because if I ever say any lies about Islam, anyone who calls me an idiot, you will have the right to the to Isn't debate that us to exactly. co correct so us. Ask this guy. Ask this guy why he lies about Christianity. What do you so, like about Christianity? So this, do you believe in one God or three gods? Um, I'm not one speaking to you. <laughs> I'm not interested in speaking to you. One God or three gods? Um, Christians, leave, leave me alone. One God leave or three gods? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Answer. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, please. You right. can't make Mansour Have some answer. respect. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, really? I, I'm not even <laughs> saying it's wrong. So, it's I'm, I'm, right. so, so you can't make him answer. So <laughs> the reason speaks. why there are some people in Speaker's Corner you can't have a conversation with, you've just seen a demonstration. Yeah? So the guys comes and calls you an idiot, calls you this and that, and then they, they are so irresponsible and nuisance. They come to your face like that. Provoke you. So. If you watch our videos, in fact, any of the channels, you'll find our discussions are there. Yeah. For the last number of years since um, smartphone came into place and recording films here. And you will see how they try to heckle every single discussion. Look, I may have a disagreement with you. It doesn't mean I have to force my belief on you. Yeah? But what they're trying to do is stop that discussion, this exchange to happen. Yeah? Uh, I wanted to hear him talk. If, if you don't, yeah, if he calls you. Yeah, but if you're not interested, you, they, they should respect. If you, if you are not interested in speaking to me, why should I just barge you to know? You have to speak to me. That's why, you know, some people need to just have some, you know, yeah, drop something. It's something uh, from your pocket. I hope it's not valuable. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, it could have been at someone's phone number. I, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so you said you... No, you didn't say that. He was an agnostic. What about, do you believe in God? I believe in God, um, but not, I'm not religious. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure, figure out, but... You know, but you, you believe in... God who created you for a purpose, and if you're not religious, you're not fulfilling that purpose, right? No, I, I, just, I don't agree with that. Okay, yeah, so what, what's your stance? So, uh, I, I, maybe like more pantheistic, I think that God's present, that you know, we were created by something, but I, I think, um, to be, and I know you won't like this, I don't think religions are really a true representation of what God is to me, because I probably talk about God in a very different way to you. you know, share with you know, me, share. What's your view about God? God, let, I'll let Austin talk. Yeah, yeah. I, I think God is more of um, a part of everything, and like a, a, more of a force than any sort of being. I understand what, where you guys come from, but yeah, to me, I, I wouldn't see the Quran as the word of God or the Bible. Where the Torah scrolls, to me, all of that is equally. I think it's a source of a lot of important information, knowledge, and wisdom, but not to me the word of God. Sorry. You know, I think you know. You know about some. Eh, to me, all of them have as many problems. You know, problems. And, you know, that's just how I look at it. You know, in terms of God, not in terms of the societal problems about God. So your view of a God comes from which source? My view of God, what is it based on? So it's uh, based on some things I've read and then just my own reason mostly. Okay. It's so what definitive resources which are you know gives you absolute truthful information about this god what have you read i absolutely don't think there is a definitive source that can give you truthful information about god. okay i don't think there is one so I, if if in the absence of a source which is not authoritative as you are now confirming 
what other sources can give you an authoritative my reason and i think the think about god a lot of it's about feeling and experience not necessarily empirical sources that's not where i think it comes from for me and i understand for you know religions of course that's so important but um, i think knowledge is observable through, through uh, sorry the knowledge of god is observable more through rationality through you know force of nature you know, sort of divine sparks of glory, you know, things like this. It, it's, I, I just see this, um, to me it's not, I haven't been convinced yet of a religious God. And I think a lot of time, you know, where these religious sources come from is questionable. You know? Leave those religious sources, the sources that you are using, yeah. you said your reason. Yeah. So, if I use my reason, and you use your reason, what's your name? Linus. Linus, Mansur. I'm Austin. Hmm? Austin. Austin. Austin, Linus and Mansur. If we used our own reasons and we arrived at a different conclusion about who or what God is, how do we determine where lies the truth? I'm not saying I'm any more right or wrong than you. Yeah, because I, I don't I think to an extent we probably can't really know the truth. Yeah. But so that's why I say I believe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So the, the reason I ask this question is if we left it only to reason and we know people using the reasons arrive at different opinions and answers. So that cannot be the arbitrator of what truth is. Of course. Yeah? yeah. So so in from your standpoint then, you cannot convincingly say, even to your own self, that what I believe about God is true. Because it may be false. Of course not. Yeah. But, but I would never say that. Yeah. I don't, so, you know, the way I so think... how then shouldn't we then ask? There must be other well, epistemic ways, other ways of knowing the truth, rather than the way that you've just described, which you have found yourself cannot guarantee absolute truth to you. But I don't think any religion can guarantee absolute truth. I don't think. No, that statement that um, I don't think any anyone. You see, you're you're making a negation, which is a positive assertion. Based on what? Based on again your your own reasoning. It's based on the fact that having. You know, I haven't obviously read the Quran or any of these scriptures as well as you have. But then how can you make an assertion without I can't, I can't, I can't an informed choice? I can't. Uh, but then by that logic, for anyone to be religious, they must. Look into it extensively, which obviously you know sufficient. I would say okay. Well, sufficient. You need sufficient enough um, reason, evidence, and informed choice to make a decision. But my point is that for me, that there, there isn't that that isn't possible because I don't view God as being something that's is God beyond our reach. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. I, yeah, I think so. I'll tell you why it's not. Mm -hmm. Because if you observe even the universe, the universe, including yourself will demonstrate to you that there is a creator of this universe. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, the so, cosmological argument. Yeah, I, I agree with parts of that. Yeah, um, so God is not beyond our human conception and mind. Truthfully, we can say there is a creator of our cosmos. That's where, that's where my reason got me to the fact that it's a God. Things like Paley's arrow, it, 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 it makes sense to me. The teleological argument. It does make sense. So I, where are we then? Not, Once you know there is a God, how many of these gods and what are these characteristics and attributes? That, the thing is, I don't know and I, I don't think I can know. But I think There's many things you can know though. That's, that's the point it, that I would like it, to share with you, ways we can know things. I understand, but for me, from what I've looked into the Quran, and I don't have time to read it enough to know it back to front, but the same with every religion I've seen, and I, I think there's parts of it... Do you that, know about the religion called Tunkawanka? No, I don't. Probably there isn't. We're not asking you to go and search about Tunkawanka, we're asking you to look at the major world religions, which are the major players in the world, yeah. which are influencing the lives of millions and billions of people. There must be something in there that convinces people, right? But I mean, why does more people believing in it? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, if a lot of people is believing, it's worth looking into it, just because a yeah. large number of people, including the laity and the scholars, are subscribing to that. That's the only reason. Not because it makes it true. Yeah. It's because it gives us a hint to say, okay, fine, let us find the reasons why people are attracted yeah. to it. I think I've done Rather than Tunkawanka, a religion which no one knows about. But I think I've, I've done that as much as I can, obviously, with the time I have. Yeah. I've looked into religions, I've spoke, I had a Muslim friend and we were taught for hours. What do you disagree I, about the Muslim concept of God? About the Muslim concept of God? Yeah. Okay. So, more about the, the source, the Quran. No, no, concept of, let's start with the concept okay, of God. Concept of God. Is there anything about the concept of God in Islam that you disagree with? From your reasoning, from your, you know, 
uh, the intellectual inquiry that you have. The concept of, of your gods. I mean, you, you can come in, by the way, you can share your views. Ask me questions about specific things. Hmm? Ask me about okay. bits of God and I'll see what come up. In Islam, there is one absolute, unique, independent, self-sufficient creator who is not born, he doesn't give birth or produce any children, totally unlike anything. He is the Lord Sustainer of this universe. Okay. Any of that you disagree with? So we're talking about Allah? Yeah. Yeah. So I think when we talk about the higher bit of gods, the, I, I agree with that stuff in a different way. With the, the content what do you we, but we all have disagree with? Is what I would like to know. Uh, the, 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 about like God. The scripture. No, let's talk about God. Oh, I think it's important for us, the concept of God, because God is the one who created us. Yeah. And God is the one we need to worship and be obedient to to, to fulfill our purpose in I, this life. I think life. we'd agree on most things the concept of God, but I think you'd agree with most Christians on no, the concept. What of God, concept right? of God in Islam that you disagree with? You haven't shared us anything yet. No, because on the concept of God, I don't think. Okay. That do you much believe God? Do you believe the Christians believe God is all knowledgeable? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Why is there anyone in the sky? Do you know? Well, no. Uh, oh, you. Yeah. The rain. The reason there's a rainbow in the sky. Not scientifically. The reason God put a rainbow in the sky. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know why Do you know? So I tell you. This is in the Bible of the Jews and the Christians. So God, at one point in the Jewish Christian Bible, He destroyed the people with the flood. You know the universal flood story, right? Okay. And then He made a covenant with the people. Said, so, you know what? From now on. I am not going to destroy mankind wholesale and as a sign of this covenant I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky and when, am I, when, am I, when I am about to destroy mankind again I'll look at the clouds and when I look at the clouds and when I see the rainbow it will remind me of the covenant that I made not to destroy mankind again and I'll stop destroying mankind again. Yeah, I really disagree with that as well because I'm not Christian or Jewish. Yeah, yeah. So the question is this is in the scripture the Holy Bible, which tells you that God needs reminding by a rainbow of a promise he made. Yeah. That doesn't describe or tell you that God is all knowledgeable and he knows and doesn't forget. That, that, would, so that, that, would be a, that would be a position of a fundamentalist Christian. No, that yeah. wouldn't be the, the... But the scripture says God needs reminding by a rainbow. You would say it means in describing a God who forgets. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. So that's why you would say, would you agree with this concept of God? He needs reminding by no, 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 rainbow? No, 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 no. First of all, I, I think the Bible, a lot of it isn't meant to be taken literally, literally right? It's not, you know, it's not put forward as being the word of God, is it, the Bible? It's but, Gospels, right? Fine, fine. So, so, but you, but <laughs> if this is considered to be authentic information from God, even though it's inspired or otherwise, right? This is supposed to give you account of information of who you are, why you're created, who is your God, what's going to happen to you when you die. Yeah. If this is coming from this book and it tells you about God that he needs reminding by a rainbow, you would question that this concept of God is not correct. Yeah, yeah. We're not Christians. No, no, I'm just kidding. The example, I, the reason I gave you this example is you said I would probably agree with the Christian concept of God as well. I said, but, but, but no, you wouldn't. But the Christian concept of God, right? You wouldn't agree with the concept. So, I don't know, I haven't read this in your phone talk, but the, I, I still think the Christian sentiment is that God is all-knowing. Even if the, the Bible, and the Bible isn't perfect, absolutely it's not perfect. There's contradictions between the Old and New Testament with regards to violence, as I'm sure you know, and how to treat criminals. I, I don't think the Bible's perfect at all, and I think any... I think Christians should, and of course I'm just as wrong or all right, as right as anyone. I think the, the better Christian approach is that of a liberal Christian, who, who looks at the Bible, the way I look at the Bible is a, a source of some very important information, right? It, it, not even information, a source of nice values in some ways, but I don't, I don't think that compromises the Christian idea of God, because for me the Bible shouldn't be taken literally. Okay. In response, the only thing I want to say is this, it's nice that the Christians are coming to the concept of God being all knowledgeable because that makes sense that you believe in a God all knowledgeable but that goes against the scripture the scripture pictures or depicts God in a different way that God needs to run by a rainbow so if your foundation if your foundation is wrong then you can't you, you can come along and say yeah yeah, yeah that's fine I, I'm, I want to believe in universality I want to believe in tolerance when your scripture says otherwise for example yeah it's just a reaction to saying that 
if you ask a Christian, do you believe in one God and three gods, do you know how, what they will say? They'll one say, God. Yeah. They'll say one God. But in practice, they believe in one family of three gods. Yeah. yeah? The reason they say one God, because if they said, I believe in three gods, you will say, <laughs> why am I going to believe in your God? Because with God, how can God be three? No, no, so, their, their argument would be that it's a, a God in three forms. The same way... No, that's, him, that's, not, that's not the belief that's the their orthodox. That's would be. The Orthodox belief is not a modalist belief in which God acts sometimes like a son, sometimes like a father, sometimes like a Holy Spirit. This was a heretical belief called the concept called modalism. This is a heresy in the church. The church believed God is actually three persons, and each person is God. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And then they say they're not three gods but one God. That's where the problem is. But the church, I don't know why I heard I'm not Christian, obviously, but <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the church would say it's three gods. No, no, the church says. <laughs> Okay, let's see what the church says. The Father is God, yep. the Son is God, yep. and the Holy Spirit is God. Yep. How many gods have we identified so far? I understand. <laughs> you know, I understand. The, church, the church would not say it's three gods because you and I know it's three, but they want to make it one. So, fine, fine. Let's leave the Christians alone. They're not here to defend themselves. It's, it's unfair okay, yeah. to talk about Christianity. Um, because they're not here to represent them. Where do we them. get the yeah. <laughs> So, as I was saying, the concept of God in Islam, do you disagree with? He was saying, maybe I would agree with the Christian concept of God as well. That's why I brought this concept, that there are many things, even the concept of God, he would disagree with the Christian concept. The, the, the Christian, he would the, disagree with... Well, any actually, to be honest, I disagree with... I, I actually don't think I... Are we, are we being filmed by the way? I have no idea if we're being filmed. Looks like so. <laughs> are they all on? Yeah, so you must be in your... Make sure... Make, 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 yeah, 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 make sure in your best behaviour. <laughs> Yeah, carry on. I just, I, to be honest, no, no, I, I don't know if I am completely on board with God being all loving, all knowing, and all powerful. Right? But I do see. Do you know our concept of God? God. Yeah, yeah. Because the Christians believe God is all loving, but for us, God doesn't love everyone. God doesn't love the criminals, the rapists, the people who oppress and so on. God says in the Quran, Inna Allaha la yuhibbu. God does not love, and it tells you these categories of people. So the idea of all loving God, no God, no no one can be more loving than God. But God doesn't love everyone equally because He's given people the choice and He's telling them, okay, you can be recipient of my love if you act this way. Do they have a little bit of love for them, or is it no love? No, no, no. God, His general love, but He gives everyone equally the sustenance, the provisions, the guidance, and so on and so forth. But there are the love which is in a higher level, can be given to the believers who are obedient to him, who follow him, who show gratitude and so on and so forth. It's a different level of love. Okay? But the love, which we're talking about, universal guidance, is for accessible to everyone. It's dispensed to everyone. But when people say, like, you know what, God loves Satan, God loves Hitler. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not, I'm what, not you know, why, what I'm saying is, why would God love a rapist? Well, from, from what perspective? Well, from a Christian perspective? No, from any perspective. Why would God I love think, a rapist? I think, uh, the, the, the Christian response would be that because we're privileged that God's grace ex extends to all of us, and we're all, you know, regardless of rapists, if we repent, it's different. And they would say, because we all have original sin, we're all sinners. Yeah, but you, when you repent, God accepts your repentance. But when you rape someone, why would God love you when you're raping? Yeah, wait. It makes I, no sense. I, I don't. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, 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 anyway. But, yeah. what, what I was saying, let's leave the Christians alone. They're not here to represent um, their belief system, so it's unfair for us to continue talking about their faith system. What I'm saying is, if you look into your reasoning, your reasoning can help you arrive with some sound, sensible uh, conclusions. That there is a creator of this universe, and that creator can be only one. But there's a limit to how much we can speculate. You cannot then use your reason to say, okay, is this creator someone who is merciful and kind or not? Because where, where do you draw your line in terms of intellectual speculations? God, the creator, has to tell you about himself. For example, okay, do I know you personally? Probably the first time I've known you. I don't know whether you are very good in mathematics or in algebra. I don't know much about you. So. Unless you tell me I'm a professor of mathematics at Oxford, then I know who you are. So there are many things I cannot guess about you. Right. Whether you are actually a very kind person or not. Maybe you are so kind that in, in fact, you know, when you ever see someone distressed or in need and so on, you actually empty your pockets. I wouldn't know unless you tell me that, okay? So about God, 
you can't just simply use your reason to find everything about him. Yeah, there's a limit, there's an epistemic limit of our knowledge about God. And that's why we're, just to finish your point, and of course you can uh, disagree if you, if you have to disagree. The creator needs to tell, the infinite creator, absolute creator, needs to tell the finite, limited creation yeah. about himself. You, as a finite individual, can you understand an, the infinite? Uh, you can't. But, 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 but I think that's where, first of all, um, I, I think that's where revealed. I'm mad at this place. I think that's where revealed, revealed theology can come in. And yeah. But, but the Do point is, that I, I'm not saying that I have information about God because I don't. I, from what I've felt and what I've looked at, I believe there's something. I, I don't exactly know what that is, but if it was for me, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm agnostic, but I don't think it's. Um, obviously, the epistemic gap is too big. Right, for us to understand God. But that's why to me that's not what God's about and I don't think we yeah. can know it. And I, I but do you agree though in principle, man being finite and limited, trying to speculate about the infinite, you can only know a limited amount of about course, things. Yeah. If the infinite, the absolute, when I say infinite, I mean absolute in all perfections, tells us who God is, that's the only way we can be convincingly sure and guaranteed about who God is. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think that the infinite God has given us that. Ah, that's where I would disagree, I know, of course, and I would yeah. say yeah. it is fair that the Creator who created us tells us why He created us and who He is. If He leaves us in this utter misguidance, not knowing who he is, it doesn't seem that he's fair and just. But, but I don't, but I don't Fairness and justice demands that the Creator actually gives us what he wants us to do and what, why he created us. But I don't think it's even right to talk about God with the words fair and just. Because to me, that's just not what God's about. You know, I, it's, I, the one who created... Imagine I, I, I made a painting, right? Yep. I draw a beautiful painting or painted a beautiful painting. Are you saying people paint beautiful painting with no purpose behind? There's a purpose, there's a motive. Maybe I am so artistic, my expression of artistry follows naturally and I express it in art. The creator is creator. He, one of his attributes is to create yeah. and that's why creation follows from him. So when the creator creates, he creates with wisdom and reason and it is not unfair to ask what the purpose of a creation is. Yeah, it's, it's not unfair to ask it, but and I, then, I don't think we know it. And, and then how would we know, is, this is where we're talking about the epistemic limits and epistemic ways. When we say epistemology, ways of knowing things, right? How do we know? So for example, we use reason, intuition, we use logic, we use science, empiricism and so on and so forth. Various ways, various ways of knowing things. Each tool may have its own utility and limitations. Science deals with hows and not whys, for example. So it's it has not its, very interesting, mate. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Science deals with its particular scope, yeah? So, what I am suggesting to you, my friend, yeah. there are ways we can use appropriate tools to know for sure who our God is and why we're created, what we're doing here and what's going to happen after life. I think that's where we disagree. I, no, then, yeah, that's yeah. fine, but I'm saying there's ways and we say it's when the Creator communicates to us and tells us so. So He sent prophets and warners, messengers, yeah. The right. Imagine you go to a a surgeon, and you just heard from your friend. This surgeon didn't even pass his medical degree, and he will kill you when he operates a bypass operation in a heart. All fake certificates. Knowing that information, would you trust your life on a bypass surgery with that surgeon? Okay, well, would you? Obviously not. No, well, no obviously not. But, but that's... Yeah, obviously not. So if somebody comes along and says, I am a prophet of God, God has appointed me as a warner, as a, as a guide to you. And this guy is a lying, cheating murderer and so on and so forth. Would you listen to him? Yeah, but if someone himself is telling you, speak the truth and he lies. <laughs> you didn't. Yeah, exactly. So that is why we're saying prophets and messengers have been raised by our Creator to be truthful, reliable individuals to tell us. That's why when people, when they look at their lives and they say, look, I have a message for you from God, they will take it seriously because this man, there's no reason for him to lie. Um, and then this is exactly what, when we analyze the, the life and biography of Prophet Muhammad, the final messenger, 
you will see that yes, um, it gives you more than enough reason to, to, to go and look at his message because of his life. He was even called by his own enemies, truthful, reliable one, as Sadiq al Amin. Yeah, uh, so when he brings, when he brings the Quran, you can examine the Quran and say, okay, let's critically analyze it. I, I, we, but obviously, everyone doesn't have time to analyze the Quran. But, um, but you have I, time I, to watch Netflix and um, social media. Because yeah, one of them is, you know, for pleasure, right? Yeah, you know, I, pleasure. This life is going to come to an end, right? One day. You're going to die within the next 200 years. Yeah. I'm going to die in the next 200 years. Because we haven't got the... But from what, from I'm just giving you a safe right. gap. From what that, I've seen... I don't, but do, 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 do you agree that? That what? we are going... All three of us will die within the next 200 years. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. right. So our pleasure will come to an end. Okay. What awaits then afterwards? If there is a life in which there is pleasure forever and forever in heaven, or suffering and misery and torture in hell, it is more important for us to concentrate on the bigger life, but I'm not the eternal life. I'm not convinced no, 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 I'm not talking about convincing. I'm talking about prioritization. But I'm not convinced enough to prioritize it. Do you know what I mean? So like, you, you're, you're saying, I will spend my life here and give prior to this, this, this life of 100 years or 130 years, maximum maybe, compared to a possible life, possible life, 120 something max. <laughs> You're lucky. Yeah, I don't, think, lucky. I don't think people live that long anymore, right? No, right? No, yeah, I'm just maybe. maybe 110 and 20. Okay, I'm just yeah. giving. So you are going to forfeit a possible life of billions of zillions of years for 110 years of this life. This is, this is just Pascal's wager, pretty much, right? But yeah, call it Pascal's but, 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 wager. But so that, where would the priorities be then, according to but, Pascal's wager? I understand, and that is one of the more convincing arguments. And Pascal's wager, it made me think about looking into, because I used to just think, oh, atheist, whatever. Right? But the, the point is that, I, I, for me, I've come to the, the general judgment that I could be as wrong as anyone. And if I'm wrong, that's, you know. But, I, but have I don't, you I don't tried think, to say, let me, okay, if, I, if, I've spoke to hours with I had a Muslim friend and we'd okay. called for hours. He tried to explain it. Did he explain about the falsification test of the Quran and the proof, positive proof yeah, of the Quran? Yeah, yeah the, the, what, what were they? The test of the surah. Yeah, bringing a surah yeah, like yeah. it. I, Why I, are people failing? They, well, to be, oh, that's a whole other thing. I think that's a bit of an unfair test. Why is it unfair? Because yeah, I spoke to my friend, and maybe my friend was one, but he said it has to be written. The proof of the, the, the surah has to be written in Arabic, yeah? B because the test of course, yeah. is challenges to bring an Arabic chapter, yeah. a surah like it. But who, so who judges? Who, who judges the surah? The people uh, who are specialised in the language. But, so, Arabic speakers, yeah? Anyone hey. who knows Arabic and specialises okay. in the language, you can say yes. So who approves it? If I write a surah, who Look, approves it? There are many people who are imitating already in the internet you can go and find. But yeah, but that's the, the thing, like, No, no, I what, what I'm no saying, no, no, what I'm saying is, if a test is objective, yeah. you use objective criteria to assess it. But the test is if the test is, if the test is subjective, then you have a problem. But it's, all right, so if I wanted to submit my challenge, where yeah. would I go? Who is no. deemed worthy? Firstly, firstly, firstly the only person deems worthy enough. Would let me, be, let me, you know, let me, let me give you a, a little bit of background information. Firstly, the Quranic challenge is objective. What is the Quranic challenge? Generally? To bring a whole Quran like it, or ten chapters like it, or a single chapter like it. The smallest of the chapter is like three lines. It's an Arabic language. It's a composition with its own rhymes and meters. Yeah. You know, if pop speech has different. We have we've been speaking in prose most of the time. We haven't been speaking in poetry. So poetry is another genre of speech in which we have rhymes and meters and so on, right? So the Quran came in a specific stylistics in which it is not prose, it is not poetry, but its own linguistic genre. The Arab have speech in which they have prose and poetry or a mixture and so on. And the Quran says, if you doubt it's not from God, produce something like it, which is unlike any of your speech. So the challenge is bringing in composition in which you can match the stylistics. The stylistics of the Quran when analyzed, because it's objective. You see, when, when I say stylistics, if I have, say, a, a subject, a verb, an object, whether it's singular, dual, and so on, and it's an object which is, you know, intransitive verb and intransitive verb, these are objective, yeah? If I say bring something like in this category, these are all objective. If I say, okay, fine, it has to be a subject followed by a verb and so on. You can't bring, like, verb first and subject first. To make it, to make it, to make it like it, so if I say, if I ask you, bring a camera like this one, you can't bring a camera 
like that color because but, but that's unlike it. Who's the judge? I'm, I'm just you telling you. That. The judge is the people who are with reason. If I said bring a color like it and you bring this one, you would say that's unlike it. The color is different. Don't all like, people have reason. Though. Yeah, yeah. So, so everyone's a judge. No, because that, but, no, no. if you have to be Arabic speaking, I'm, I'm, just you, I'm just giving you. I'm just giving you the criteria who can be the judge on the panel. If somebody says, yeah, that's like it, I will say, no, that's unlike it, because even the color is different. The shape, size, look at the number of, um, what are called, the lenses for uh, the cameras itself different. So when the Quran says bring something like it, it has to be with the nature, same linguistic genre. So the objective nature of the challenge is there in the Quran. People know about it, and people are still failing to bring it. So the Quran affirms first, Human beings and jinns, if they were to come together to bring something like it, they cannot. It's an assertion. The Quran doesn't just simply stop there with an assertion and say, that's it. It says, look, if you are skeptic, if you are doubtful that this Quran is from God, that's the way to falsify it. Bring a chapter like it, falsify it. But, but who, to falsify it has to be able to be proved wrong, yeah? But falsify I, means bringing a chapter, imitating the Quran, yeah, yeah. as the Quran demands of it. It has to be proved wrong. But, so who is the judge, is what I'm getting at, because I understand. I, I... You can bring a chapter and you can say, look, I am imitating chapter number 114, for example, 112, right? It's 114, any chapter, there's 114 yeah. chapters in the Quran, you know? Yeah, yep, fine, yeah. Yep. Say I'm imitating 114. So you are expected to demonstrate your knowledge of the stylistics of chapter 114. You'll say, look, this chapter has this, these lines, Ayat is called, and this is the line, this is the stylistics of it. This is uh, the next line, this is the stylistics of the next line, and so on. And here is my composition with the same stylistics, but of course employing, not plagiarism, employing, this has one verb with a particular composition, I have a different verb with the same stylistics. We're not asking you to imitate 100% plagiarism, because that's not bringing something okay. like it. And then, if you demonstrate that this is you've done it, then you can say, look, I brought something like it. That's okay, the problem. So People are unable to demonstrate that they have matched the stylistics of any chapters of the Quran. There are plenty there. If you go on the internet and type in a surah like it, you'll find plenty of examples. And none of them you'll find they've demonstrated so you can to judge, anyone. So you can judge it yourself. I am saying judgment should be left to qualified, knowledgeable individuals of the Arabic language. It doesn't have to be a Muslim. It could be people who are expert in the language. I just think that's such but, a far fetched challenge but, but, for anyone. What, what percent of the world speaks Arabic? Many. Uh, but what percent? Five, no, 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 ten. many. Arabic is actually one of the world languages. In fact, you know, it, it's thirty percent. What percent of them are Muslim? Quite a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it comes down to such a small pool. Of if you people. can't do it, get someone else to do it. That's what the Quran says. The Quran is quite reasonable. It says, look, if you cannot do it, seek your helpers and supporters to do that job. Do all, um, do all sects of Islam believe in the same Quran? Yeah. The Ahmadis. Right. Same. 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 They, they we believe maybe theologically something different about whether there's a prophet after a prophet Muhammad yeah. or not, how, how whether there's imams and so on and so yeah, forth. How do they believe in the, in the Quran if they believe this? Because the Quran is one source, they have other sources which uh, co corroborates their what, supposed belief system. So how, how does surely that directly contradicts the Quran? Many beliefs do, and that's why we're saying these people need to come back to the Quranic message, and that's why the majority of the world are Sunnis because they are in line with what the Quranic message is. The people who are not in line with the Quran, they have deviated and you find their belief like that. I have a question about um, the hadith that my um, friend told me about. So yeah. it's that um, Adam was, was 18, 17 cubits tall. If he was, you know, say that's what, 18 meters tall? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. 10, 20 feet tall. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's much taller than us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, six, six cubit, cubit is lot, much longer than us. Yeah. Um, just like how that's in heaven. But that wasn't on earth, because I've heard in my heaven. Friend, my friend yeah, yeah. said he was also that high. Yeah, yeah. Earth. Ironically, or, or, or you know, surprisingly, look, um, I was just. Oh. Someone asked the same question again. Oh, what, what does it say? Uh, height of Adam and later generations. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So this is a paper written by one of our friends in Let Me Turn the Tables and he explains it in terms of 
what exactly the hadith is talking about. In heaven, this height, when human beings come down, is it gradual progression of, not progression, gradual decline of the height? Or is it like when they're sent, when Adam was sent down, it was already in a, in a shorter form? I've asked two Muslim friends and yeah, said yeah. two different things. Yeah, so this is a someone who will go to all the sources and he will tell you exactly uh, if I can be, Who wrote this? One of our friends. What's so simply name? put in the paradise, Waqar Shima. Simply put in the paradise, Adam height was 60 cubits. However, on earth, it was reduced from its original perfect height and it continues that way to this day. As in like, he, like as, as he was sent down to earth, like he instantly became like six feet. He, he was less, yeah. Oh, like 60. Yeah, yeah. Because what the height was described was in heaven. So you just, you, so should I say to my Muslim friend who said he was that height on earth, like you're just wrong? Yeah, I don't think the hadith says that, okay? If you understand the hadith in context and find out. So when we are going back to heaven, look, this earth isn't actually that big compared to our solar system cosmos, tiny. In, in hereafter, when the world is going to come to an end and a new world is going to be made, it will be huge. In that, human beings can be taller, bigger, because the world will be bigger, right? You can have, imagine that you have a whole earth like your own home. Distance is not a problem. You can just travel just like that. You can beam yourself from here to the other side of the world, right? You can you can even think about now in Star Trek, right? But in the technology, then in heaven and so on, will be far more than what you can imagine. So it's not a problem in terms of the distance. You can have millions of years of distance from one to the other if you want and so on, because the world will be huge, recreated uh, by the Creator. So. As we were discussing, just to coming back on that point, we, what, we were talking about how do we, how can we be sure about this Quran or guidance, the scripture is from God or not? We have to use our critical thinking and scrutinize and see whether we can falsify it and prove it wrong. Because if we find that the Quran, we expect, look, do you expect a book written 1400 years ago talking about signs? should get something wrong because we know science develops and we know more and more about science like we they used to do before there must be something they got it wrong and we know that the bible or many books of the the greek philosophers whether it's galen or aristotle or hippocrates they get it wrong they got it wrong because they only had the scientific tools at that time to to tell you about what what the reality is with our advancement today with microscope and so on and so forth, we are in a better position to, to, to understand the reality and more depth. Obviously you think the Quran is good or what I'm saying, What I'm saying is, a book like the Quran, if it talked about science, you expect some mistakes of scientific nature. I am saying, Muslims are saying, there is nothing that will establish, yeah. est go against established science. I, I can't go, go into this because I, I don't know well enough. I can just yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, that's one things, example. That's one example. Heard, so, I, so, uh, so I'll <laughs> talk about, this is one avenue of knowledge. The Quran talks about history. Someone who is illiterate man in the desert, what does he know living in Arabia, what happened in Indonesia, for example? Okay. Does he know what happens in the deep sea, in the deep oceans, or deep down in the volcano? Does he know, you see, or in the, in the past, what did the pharaohs do? I mean, did, does he have access to hieroglyphics? It was a dead language. So when the Quran describes information of the past, and it gets it right, but when every other and when every other literature at that time, whether it's the Bible, yeah. I can compare with the so, Bible. So I wish there was a Christian who can now give some reasons. The Bible talks about a pharaoh at the time of Joseph, for example, and calls it Pharaoh. Quran says no, he's a king. Now, from our knowledge of timelines and so on, we know at that time there was no pharaohs. There were that kings. Six hundred years later. Hmm? It, 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 yeah, yeah. The years pharaohs. The, the title pharaoh was applied much, much later. So the Quran. It's not copying the errors of the Bible. It's bringing information which now we know today to be true based on what? Our understanding, unearthing, and packing of hieroglyphics. Well, you can't just say the Prophet knew hieroglyphics and every other thing, everything about history. You don't think there's so, any way that knowledge could have been passed down otherwise. Yeah. And it's not. You what know, we're saying is this is one example yeah. out of many when we can't find this information source anywhere not in the community of his people yeah. not in the communities of the greeks and the persians and the romans so the prophet is bringing up this information which seems like he's the only source of it well, we, if you find the source of it then you can say he, he actually learned from there 
but there is nothing to say he learnt it from. That's what we're asking. Go and find the source. And this is one example out of hundreds and hundreds. So if you have hundreds of examples where the Quran could have easily got it wrong by copying the mistakes of the contemporary knowledge of that time, and it, did, it doesn't do that. It somehow filters all the errors and gives you what is correct. I, I'm not entirely convinced there are no errors and I can't go into it now. No, what I'm asking is, it. this is the claim we're making. Okay. You need to scrutinize that claim, substantiate it and, or falsify it. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. If I you find that. I was just no, no. What, what I'm saying thought, is, but... if you find that you cannot falsify it, then you have to really reasonably ask, how did this man know all of these things? When it's, for example, I, I want to give you one last example, right? Which I talked about today as well. You see the sun setting almost, right? Yeah. What sound does the sound make as a star? Um, no, no idea. Uh, right. Right. Hmm? A hiss. No. <laughs> How does it go? Well, I'm not going to do an impression of the sun. Right. Bro. So, did you hear it with your, neck, with your ears? Uh, no. Right. Do you know there are many other stars called pulsars who also emit sounds and frequencies? Pulsars. Yeah? Can you hear the sound with your, neck, with your ears? You can't. So if someone were to guess, you can say, it, it may sound like or it may sound like meow, 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 meow. It could be anything out of billions of guesses. The Quran... The Qur I'm curious about what... You, I mean, there's no oxygen in uh, space, so the sound doesn't make but sound. It emits frequencies. Yeah, as in it and would you can, make a sound you can, if there was oxygen it. But you can, it, because it emits frequencies, you can pick up those frequencies. Right. Yeah? Okay. So when the Quran says, وَالطَّارِقْ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقْ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِمْ what this attarik, meaning this star called attarik, knocking sound, knock, 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 hammering sound. That's what attarik means, a knocker. And it says, what is a knocker? The one who knocks. It says, a piercing bright star. Now, why does the Quran describe this star with something is a knocker, something that knocks, hammers? Knock, 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 knock. Only today we know from our knowledge of Pulsar, you can actually hear it. There's lots of online video record. Video, sound recordings um, from authoritative organizations which uh, studies um, as, as, as astronomy and so on. We can hear the sound. So, how does the prophet, this is one out of many examples, I'm just picking up one. How does the prophet know this? It cannot be something that his community or his contemporaries in other um, Greek, Roman, Persian um, lands knew about it. No one describes it. As far as I know, from my searching, there's no information about someone knew about this. Thing. And well, absolutely now, absolutely. no, no, what I'm saying is this is something, the example I'm giving you as an offering to go and research on this subject. And if you find that this is the case, Quran is the only one that talks about 1400 years ago, this information, no one knows about it. And we came to know about it recently. How does the Quran know this? It I cannot mean, be just simply yeah, well, guesswork. Right? No, <laughs> I'm not asking you to take anything on board. I'm giving you information for you, for you to check, verify, scrutinize, and then make your this conclusion out of it what you make of it yeah okay. so that's what i'm offering informed choices which what is we're requesting you to make based on information that you hear verify it okay. even quran tells us when someone comes a, a fasic individual or someone who's not a good person verify the information it's a principle in islam that you have to verify what has been told if that wasn't the case you can just you can just believe in anything what anyone say and then you'll regret later like someone says you know what your mom is in hospital is dying or something like that and you just run towards it and there was an april fool thing you don't like that or someone make a joke the opposite and then someone dies and yeah so islam tells us otherwise it gives us reasonable approaches to take in our life how we should behave and so on so to believe in islam believe in god believe in prophet muhammad believe in the quran quran offers positive proofs and falsification tests so i just gave you some examples of it for you to think and reflect and then we can discuss perhaps further another time well, you take care not quite converted i'm not asking you to convert i'm asking you to reflect and make your informed choices based on informed decision. Yeah.